G'day everyone, we're going to be looking at how to boost the base of a JBL charge speaker. So the JBL charge has the passive radiators on either side and so we've got it hooked up to pipes um, that are flared on the end and another pipe uh, running all the way down there. <coughs> so th with the frequency response of a JBL charge 5 speaker it hits the frequencies around 62 60 70 Hertz with a fair amount of power but when it reaches up to that's around 82 83 Hertz there's a bit of a dip um, and likewise when it comes to the much deeper base so when you get down to 55, 50, 45 hertz and below. It's just simply not a big enough speaker to be able to hit those deeper frequencies. And so with this setup, we've got this shorter pipe here, which has a acoustic length of around 105 centimeters, which is a quarter of the wavelength of the 83 hertz frequency 82 Hertz roundabout and so because this is a quarter of that wavelength and this effectively functions uh, acoustically as a closed pipe resonator that's why this length here being a quarter of the wavelength of 82 Hertz means that that frequency and around that frequency gets boosted and then the longer pipe here has a length of around 200 centimeters, which is a quarter of the wavelength of um, the frequency that hit was about 43 hertz, about 42, 43 hertz. So effectively, the speaker itself is good at producing 60 hertz. This one here amplifies 82-ish hertz. This one here amplifies 45, 43-ish hertz. So it really does even out the frequency response of this speaker. And obviously if you have something different, like maybe you have a JBL flip or you have an extreme or something like that, you can have a look at the frequency responses and figure out what um, pipe lengths might work best for enhancing the base for that. Now one of the things with having pipes of a certain length like this is that they're known for being one note wonders as in they're very good at producing one specific frequency and not so good at others which can produce a frequency response that's kind of bumpy. And so what I'll put on the screen now is um, some settings that I used in an app called uh, Rootless James DSP, which is an app for Android that allows you to set a frequency response um, curve for um, equalizing sound coming out of whatever sound or music playing app that you're using. And so there's obviously a big list there of different frequencies that I've had to adjust in order to even out the response. The reason I've used this app is because the other apps that I've tried that do this type of thing um, either aren't very precise in, in, in adjusting specific frequencies or they just don't have as many options in them. But this particular app has a lot of options. It's very, very precise, which is what you need when you're dealing with a setup like this that has um, boosts and dips in very narrow ranges of frequencies. So looking at the construction of this, I'm not too sure if I can do this one handed. Uh, yeah, that's not so bad. So if you do manage to, there we go, <laughs> pull the speaker out, uh, I've used, this is actually plastic for covering containers of food and so what I've done is I've cut a hole in that. So I've used duct tape to attach it onto the end of the pipe and cut a hole in it. So that the wind speaker sits in there, there's a nice seal so the air doesn't get out. 
And then so I've used obviously the corner attachments, I've used duct tape to hold it all together. And then at the end, these were bowls. You can buy from Big W flared bowls. And so this is just a cutout of that to make the ports flared, which helps reduce distortion in the sound if you've got a fairly large amount of air moving in and out of the end of a pipe. Having it flared like this helps reduce the distortion. And then down here at the very bottom, there is this, which folds inwards, which means that it's sort of flat and good for storage. And then when you want to actually set it up, if you kick this out, it's effectively like a stand so that it stands by itself. So yeah, I haven't actually seen this being done before, only on speakers that are separately sort of cabled up um, speakers, like a regular sort of a subwoofer setup. Have I seen someone use pipes before? As for a Bluetooth speaker hooked up to a pipe setup like this before, I haven't seen it being done before. And it produces, you know, as long as you're using the app to equalize out the frequency response it produces actually a really good sound and it's a, a good alternative to buying um, for example a, a bigger speaker a bigger setup that can really hit um, deeper frequencies deeper bass sounds this is an alternative to that if you have a speaker that you like taking with you um, in a portable way out to different places and you, but you also want to be able to hit um, you know, deeper bass sounds at home and you're happy with it not necessarily going super loud, then this is actually a really good setup that you can have. And um, moving on from this, um, what I'm thinking of, and just to make it look a little bit fancy and tidy it up, is maybe putting some lights on it and then doing a final spray paint job. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Oh, and I did forget to mention that the pipe itself is 90 mil pipe, which I got from Bunnings, and that the length of the pipe, this one for example, is going to be slightly longer total than 105 centimetres in this case. So that one was 200, this one was 105, because of the fact that the speaker juts in here a bit. So there's got to be slightly longer pipe than there is... Well, it's a, it's a little bit difficult to measure exactly because this flaring here comes out by, you know, this amount, but the acoustic length of that is about half that. You, you'd have to do a bit of research on how flaring works exactly, but effectively from about where my pinky is here through the pipe to about where my pinky is here is going to be the acoustic length. And so that's what you need to make to be 105 centimetres. And then in the case of the longer one, um, 200 centimetres. Okay, I've got the light strip sticky taped onto the pipe set up now. I might go ahead and do some spray painting in a minute. Okay, so I've got it all painted up. I tried to match the colour of the speaker somewhat, but that's the only spray paint I really had sitting around. So if we now uh, turn on the lights, that's what we get. So honestly, it goes pretty well. I'm pretty happy with the sound, the fact that it can get down to 45 hertz with um, a decent amount of power um, and I even get a little bit of down, down at 40 hertz. It, it makes listening a, a really good experience once you've put in the time to get the um, equalization set up correctly in your phone so there it is thanks for watching guys please leave any comments if you have any thoughts or questions on this at all and um other than that have a good one